The final score, Wrexham 2, Mansfield United nil. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC, and the game is a fuss, my friends. Oh, that is a big win and a big performance by Wrexham, who, well, at the moment seem to be getting into form at just the right point in the season, don't we? An impressive victory against the league leaders. We are now level on points with them, and that last six match running, well, if we can keep playing like this, We'll be quite happy with ourselves, I think. Wrexham starting off with one change. James McLean coming back in at left wing back for the injured Jacob Mendy. Rather than in the centre of midfield, of course, where he looked so good in recent games before his suspension. But then that midfield three has been impressive, hasn't it? And O'Connor, Cannon and Lee would be impressive again in this massive test against the Mansfield side who've been up there all season, who have really been impressive who have a fabulous away record, the best away record in the division, and yet Wrexham really came to the party. Now, we had to be braced for the fact that Mansfield would have plenty of possession, and they did. But Wrexham looked controlled, and it was rare that Mansfield got a real sight of goal. In fact, Arthur Oconquo didn't have one save to make in the entire match at the start of the second half. Wrexham conceding possession but not coming under immense pressure, I would argue. The back three, utterly outstanding, repelling absolutely everything. There was no opening chance for Wrexham as well. Uh, a good breakaway after Cannon made an excellent interception. Worked the ball out to the right-hand side. Bolton burst past Bowery and ripped in across. It fell off a defender behind Lee, who tried an overhead kick from 15 yards out. Got it on target, but not enough venom to trouble a keeper. And soon after that, Mansfield's problems at the back began. They did have problems at the back, believe me. Hewitt, having to come in at left-back due to injury to Cargill, had, was making his return to the first team after 18 months out with an injury, and he didn't last the first 10 minutes, I'm afraid. In the second minute, uh, McLean clattering into him, got a yellow card. Mansfield are asking for something more. I think yellow's about right. He did go in hard. He did arrive a bit late, but I don't think to the extent that it was a, a red. And certainly that early in the game, it's unlikely for a red card to be shown by the referee. I'm not saying I agree with that. But yeah, I think the ref just about got it right. Bo Hewitt wanted to come back on, but couldn't continue. So that's bring on McLaughlin, a specialist left back, which meant Bowery had to switch across to the right. And McLaughlin himself just hasn't had much game time this season either so uh, another untried left back and it immediately caused a problem for Mansfield because Bolton was just beating him at will and so there was a major major problem a major imbalance for Mansfield defensively Bowery on the right hand side also I mean I know he's had a very good season he's known as a striker really before the, the spell at right back um, he didn't look totally secure either when McLean went at him now, Wrexham had a lot of good combinations down the left-hand side, working the ball around him. Meanwhile, at the other end, Keeler Dunn was Mansfield's great hope. Their strikers didn't really look like they were about to get any change out of the centre-back soon. Uh, Keeler Dunn floating between the lines was more threatening. He was finding space, wasn't quite finding uh, an opportunity to really make it count yet. So it was a tight, tense opening... Quite fast paced though. Uh, it was just the chances weren't being created. Mansfield's first sight of goal came when Flint fed the ball long. Akers, who uh, Akins rather, who looked to be Mansfield's best attacking option, really won a good flick header. Swansea was in a uh, Swansea. Swan was in on goal and looked like he was going to be able to get a, a clear sight and shot at Oconquo. But Max Clueth, who was outstanding, came across from the right side of centre back position and managed to slide, uh, force him wide initially, and then get a really good block on his shot. Brilliant work by Clueth. And five minutes later, Clueth played as well when Wrexham took the lead. Clueth on the right-hand side of his own half, feeding a tremendous ball down the right channel. A great run by Cannon, who hit, arrived at the ball about five yards from the goal line and hit a first-time cross into the six-yard box, brunts the centre-back, failed to make an interception at the near post and Mullins slotted it in from six yards out to give Wrexham the lead. Brunt probably should have done better, 
But I think we've got to look more at the quality of the approach play. Firstly, Cruyff's magnificent pass, which immediately opens up Mansfield. And then the fact that Cannon hit it first time into a good area, just making it possible that Brunt might make a mistake. He's accelerating into the six-yard box to hold a position on the near post. And then suddenly he finds the ball's already coming in on his wrong side. And he's off balance, tries to make an interception, fails to make contact, and Mullen slots it home. Decent finish, although it was only six yards out, because Flint was arriving late to try and block him. And the keeper was in a central position. I mean, there wasn't that much of the goal to aim at where Mullen went, but he slotted it in perfectly. Two wonderful first touches from Cannon and Mullen, and Mansfield suddenly are opened up wide and are behind. And Wrexham continues to look good in midfield. Uh, Connor was making interception after interception, as was Cannon. Palmer and Mullin were really working Mansfield's defence. And although, you know, there weren't that many clear-cut chances, there was an edginess at the back for Mansfield. A great deal because of the hard work of Mullin, who was chasing everything and forcing errors and never giving them a moment's peace. That there really wasn't at the other end of the pitch. There was a, a near thing for Mansfield in the 37th minute, albeit not a close-range chance. A corner was swept in and cleared. It looked like it may have gone out again, but the ball came back in. A shot was loosed off in the box, a crowded panels area. Lee made a good block. It spanned back out to Lewis, who from a good 25 yards really nailed his shot through a crowded penalty area. Conquo clearly couldn't see it until it was too late, and it whistled just past the right post. But then Wrexham were looking to, to break away and put pressure on and were caught out just before the break, luckily for Wrexham and not able to find a teammate. So 1-0 up at half-time. The second half, Mansfield opened up their best chance of the game, 48th minute, a breakaway again. Keeler Dunn, who'd been pushed up into an attacking position and, and as the first half wore on, which I thought was a little bit odd. I didn't think it really made the most of his talents trying to find space. He drifted out of the game a bit, but he did well here to feed it to Gale, who was just on as a substitute. He drove down the left channel, hit a good shot towards the bottom left corner of Quanko, very quick to get down with this long right arm and push it round the post. Looking at the replay, I think it would have hit the post rather than gone in, but Quanko wasn't to know that and made certain that he could save it. Uh, yeah, Kielden continued to be up front. They brought Brunt off the centre-back, who was partly culpable for the first goal at half-time, and made a remarkable reshuffle of their back four. Now, I don't watch Mansfield week in, week out, so maybe this was smart, I don't know. But you suddenly had a back four where Flint was still there in his central defensive position. Brunt had gone off. They'd brought Bowery in from full-back to play at centre-back now, um, which meant he played right-back, left-back and centre-back in, in one game. McLaughlin remained on the left, looking vulnerable. And on the right, they dropped Aikens, who was, you know, to me, a genuine threat up front. I was impressive in the first half. So it was a strange thing to do. Two strikers in the back four, one of whom had been looking good going forwards. And it didn't help or change anything about their defensive setup because Wrexham continued to make them uncomfortable. There was a wonderful end-to-end -end passage of play uh, 10 minutes into the half, which culminated with Luke Bolton getting the ball deep in his own half and just surging on a wonderful run. He burst through. It was three-on-three. Three. Ollie Clark came across to try and make a challenge, but the Mansfield player pulled out of the challenge because he'd just been booked he did a, for a foul on Elliot Lee. The two of those two had a real ding-dong. Uh, Bolt, uh, it was uh, Lee who won it and Clark was, had to be substituted soon afterwards so anyway, Bolton gets past Clark he's got options either side but as defend the defenders are covering those options, it opens up beautifully through the middle, he carries it to the end of the D and you're thinking he's got to hit this, now he's got a clear sight of goal and he decides to try and roll in Mullen and gets it wrong and it's intercepted by Flint dramatic stuff really exciting but I think maybe he made the wrong decision right at the end on the hour comes the first of two hugely, well, I say hugely controversial moments. Certainly talking points. Because Mansfield have an equaliser disallowed. Now, the equaliser, I think the decision is perfectly correct. The ball's rolling into the right, the left-hand side of Wrexham's box. A Conquo comes across. 
was maybe you know he's waiting for the ball to come in the area so he can pick her up maybe waited a little bit too long and Keeler Dunn raced in took it from him ran it along the goal line and walked it into the net <clears throat> so at that point the referee blows his whistle and says he kicked her out of a conquo's hands and looking at the replays he did I, I think this is a correct decision but it's a precursor of the mistake that's to come because again the ref just oh, for me just showboating a touch decides to wait and let everyone stress a bit before blowing his whistle and giving what clearly was the correct decision and as I said this will come later although before then Man City have one more opportunity Lewis doing well switching it to Akinzu pulled it in to the edge of the area Clark hitting the shots which he couldn't keep down from the edge of the D decent position but <clears throat> no control on the finish and then came that second controversial moment halfway through the second half it was a strange sort of move in that <clears throat> Mullin picks her up at first and appears to be clearly fouled, but the referee doesn't give it. Um, the ball spins away and ends up dropping 50-50 between McLaughlin and Cannon. McLaughlin looks favoured to get there, but slips, and Cannon manages to slide in and just about get the telling touch and work it across to Bolton on the right, who's got a clear run at Bowery. Bowery gets his body position all wrong, as if he's not normally a centre-back, and takes Bolton out. It's a very poor challenge. When you look at it, from whatever angle, he's twisted his own body around and, and just clatters Bolton. But the ref gives a penalty after, again, a very long, rather melodramatic pause. It's not a penalty. It's a foul. And I, I think you, you could make a case for it being a red card, possibly, insofar as Bolton's wide, but he's not so wide that he isn't going to come into the box and have a clear shot at goal. And there's no one else in the area. So the referee yeah, just makes a bit of a pig's ear of it, to be honest. But it's a good foot or two outside the box, no question. Wrecks some fortune. Mullen takes advantage of the fortune in the most remarkable way, stepping up and just going outright power, driving it over Christy Pym's head. And Pym actually manages to get a hand up to it. And is lucky to still have his hand intact after the strength Mullen struck as it ricochets off his hand and into the roof of the net. In fact, you can hear two distinct sounds, one of which is the ball cracking against Pim's hand and the other one is it hitting the net. And quite frankly, it's quite strange in a way, I think. I don't know if Pim just wasn't able to get his hand up and actual vertical in time, because usually if you get a deflection on something hit that hard, it deflects a long way off path. And yet Pim managed to get a hand to it, but couldn't stop it going into the net. Mullins' 99th goal for Wrexham as well. Wow, remarkable. Eighth highest score of all time for the club now. And it looked comfortable, if I'm honest, from then on. Wrexham played with real control in the second half, had the ball for decent periods, moved it around well, and again, defended superbly. 16 minutes left to make a double change. Fletcher comes on for the excellent Palmer. Barnes comes on for the excellent Bolton. And both of them immediately are lively and are playing their part in forcing Mansfield deep there's another opportunity for Wrexham and McLean feeds a glorious... Well, I mean, this is Harlem Globetrotter stuff, this. McLean holding on to the ball about 10 yards into the Mansfield half on the left flank and just waiting for Lee, who is <laughs> moving around and just trying to confuse the fullback. Eventually, he runs in behind and McLean scoops a beautiful ball over the top and Lee is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Pim comes out really quickly. Lee probably will be disappointed he hasn't hit the target. He lifts it over Pim but puts it wide. Fletcher charging in at the far post in front of a completely open goal at full stretch, gets a foot to it, but he's got no chance of controlling the touch and it goes just wide of the far post. Two minutes left, another couple of changes. Good to see George Evans coming back on for an exhausted Lee, who worked his socks off. And of course, Marriott coming on for Mullen, who got a fabulous reception, as he ought to, having won the match. And Wrexham continued to look comfortable and keep them at arm's length until the end of the game. A superb performance, a statement win, and we now find ourselves three points clear of fourth place with a game in hand. And the next couple of away games will be crucial. Teams who are down the bottom end of the table, but in good form, it'll be interesting to see just how those games pan out. If we can get six points out of that, we've got two home games to come, and any points that have been dropped by teams below us will really be a massive bonus. Looking at the performances, Conquo was great, uh, had nothing to do. Maybe he was a little fortunate when he picked the ball up at the last second, but the one save he had to make, he save it, made very well. Then 
The three centre-backs, goodness me, how good were they? Boyle was excellent again, just physically dominant, had no problems at all uh, with Mansfield. And he looks such a different type of defender to what he looked at the start of the season when he was stepping out quite a lot and getting players running in behind him. That's not happening now. In the middle, O'Connell, utterly magnificent, utterly magnificent, winning the ball, carrying it forwards aggressively a couple of times. There's one wonderful surge that he made where he actually managed to accelerate past all his teammates. And it ended because he had no options. But he, again, so authoritative, O'Connell, you know, sort of feel he's a championship defender. He's certainly playing like that at the moment. Our man of the match is Clueth, uh, my man of the match as well, O'Connell and Cannon, and a couple more, to be fair, are contenders, but Clueth was just utterly magnificent. Aikens is good in the air, tried to, that usual thing, of trying to see if he can get past the youngster, couldn't. Um, Clueth's defending was so calm, the way he brought the ball out from the back was marvellous, and that glorious pass to Cannon to tee up the first goal. Clueth's flying at the moment. The wing-backs, well, Bolton, Tremendous. I mean, the big thing about Bolton is his burst of acceleration, that first movement. And Paul McLaughlin just couldn't stop him. The ball, Bolton would get quite high up the pitch. He doesn't need to build up momentum. He just receives it close to McLaughlin, then bang, he's away, and McLaughlin's chasing shadows. Excellent, excellent performance for Bolton. Solid defensively and so purposeful driving forwards. And on the left hand side, well, McLean. Maybe slightly subdued because he got such an early yellow card and the sort of yellow card that a referee is probably thinking, I've got my eye on you now, pal. So he was cautious, but he was solid again. Defensively, he was good. He won some good headers defensively. And he did get a couple of decent balls lays on into the box as well. So good performance by McLean. The centre mids again as a unit, absolutely tremendous. O'Connor making all these interceptions, stepping in and breaking things up beautifully. This reading of the game. It's fabulous. Uh, Cannon, oh, I mean, Cannon on the front foot all the time. He's playing out of his skin. But that assist was perfection. Really impressive, Cannon. And then as well, Elliot Lee, again, just so hard working in midfield, covering so much. Had a real battle, as with Ollie Clark, which he won, uh, ultimately. Uh, great stuff from those three. Palmer battled away and really made his presence felt uh, amongst the Mansfield defenders. And Mullin was outstanding again. Two goals, nicking the ball off people, putting pressure on all the time, great runs, brilliant. That was an outstanding performance by Rex, and an absolute pleasure to watch. Let's hope that they can maintain this form, because if they do, we're going to be all right. With a final score of Wrexham 2, Mansfield Town 0, I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.